Good morning and welcome to The Real Outdoors where we talk about camping, hunting, and do gear reviews. And today, that's what we're doing is a gear review. I'm actually going to be doing a few post hike reviews. I'll put a link up in the eye in the sky to our AT section hike that we just did a couple weeks ago. It also gave me the opportunity to try out some new gear that I hadn't used before. And so I'm gonna do a little post hike review of each of those items that I got to try out. Click that red subscribe button and be sure to click the notification bell so you know when I'm coming out with these reviews. First thing I'm going to review today is the 3F UL Lanshan 2 Pro. Lots of people are familiar with the Lanshan 2 and the Lanshan 1. They've been out for a while, but in 2020, they came out with the Lanshan Pro. This is the two-person version. It is a single wall tent instead of a double wall. That single wall construction gives you a bit less weight to carry, but then because it doesn't have a separate rain fly, you do tend to run into issues with condensation. I was supposed to use this tent on my trip to Philmont, but unfortunately, Philmont got canceled this year due to the coronavirus. New Mexico governor just said, nope, not gonna have any treks at Philmont this year. And so it got canceled, but we did the AT section hike instead. That gave me an opportunity to use the Lanshan 2 for the first time on a camping or hiking trip. As far as the weight is concerned and the size, it fit perfectly inside my pack horizontally. Didn't have to shove it in there vertically. You know, fit perfectly horizontally. I ended up actually carrying it on the outside of the pack. It ended up getting wet the first night of the five night section hike. I didn't want to shove a wet pack into my Hyperlite Mountain Gear pack. Just wouldn't be a good situation. So I actually strapped it to the outside fit fine there and then it was very easy to get to when we got to our next campsite. But it does fit horizontally, which I like. Obviously there's no poles. All I do have in here is some tent pegs to hold it down, but it fit fine in the backpack. Big question, condensation. That's the big issue with single wall tents. When I reviewed this tent the first time, when I first got it and just did a quick setup video, that was the majority of the comments. The fact that it's a single wall tent, you're gonna to have to fight with condensation. I have to say it was summer in Georgia. It rained almost every day. So as you can imagine, the humidity was through the roof and there was plenty of opportunity for this to get rained on, to have humidity, to have condensation. I thought this actually performed better than my tarp tent pro trail for condensation. I think part of it is it has doors on both sides. And even though I couldn't open up the vestibule flaps, it still gives a lot of ventilation out of this tent. Now, that's not to say there wasn't condensation on the roof, you know, down at my feet and above my head where that peak is. There absolutely was condensation, but it wasn't enough to even drip on me, not once. I did keep a little camp towel with me. And when I woke up in the morning, I would kind of wipe down that condensation and wring that towel out outside the tent just to reduce the moisture inside of the tent. But it was never an issue. It never dripped on me. It never got my top quilt wet. I, I really don't see the condensation being an issue. It was fantastic. You can't ask for more humidity and more water and more rain than we had on this trip. And it still performed just great. I mean, no complaints at all. The so as far as the size is concerned, it was enormous. I had so much room in there, it was great. The only issue was it was hard to find a level site out on the AT, so I was continually fighting gravity. This just meant I had more space because I was smushed up against one side of the tent or the top or the bottom, and I had all kinds of space to put gear inside the tent and keep it dry. I did keep quite a bit in the vestibules. The vestibules were very good size. I could keep quite a bit of gear, including my entire pack, which was mostly empty by that point. You know, all my gear was inside the tent that I had inside the pack, so the pack was basically empty. I just left it underneath the vestibule and it worked just fine. Next issue is I did not use a ground cover. As I'm sure you can imagine, if you've ever been on the AT or any hiking trail for that matter, there's a lot of rocks and sticks, even at campsites, which I had a fair amount of. Neil Gap, it was a lot of rocks at that site. At Woods Hole Shelter, there were a lot of roots that my tent was on. Still didn't use a ground cover, didn't feel like I needed to. Tent held up just fine. I know it's only five nights, but never really had an issue, didn't feel like anything was even poking me through the tent, so that was fine. I do have to say, unless I'm forced to use a tent, 
I won't be using it again. That has nothing to do with the quality of the tent. I think it's a great tent, but I'm a hammock camper. And once you've slept up off the ground, it's really hard to go back to the ground. As I mentioned, I only had one night out of five where I had a level campsite. So I literally fought gravity all night. I was either sliding to the bottom of the tent, to the side of the tent, the right side, the left side, the top, all through the night and you're fighting it and you wake up and your body can really feel that. Like I had cramping from my body trying to fight gravity over the night. And so that's just not worth it to me. Everywhere we went, there was an opportunity for a hammock. Two of the people that were with us on the hike slept in hammocks. They never had an issue. The other cool thing about the hammocks is you can set up the tarp first, then you have a dry area to work. Once you get that tarp set up, everything can go underneath that tarp and you have a nice dry area to work with your gear, get your hammock and your sleeping system set up. It did give me an idea though that if I ever do use the tent again, which will only be if absolutely necessary, for example, like at Philmont where you have to use tents and you can't fill, use uh, hammocks, I will bring my hammock tarp, which only weighs seven ounces, but then that'll give me kind of a, a dining fly area or a dry area that I can set up immediately when we get to camp, even if it's pouring down rain, like it did the first night at camp on the AT. And then I have a dry area to work where I can get my gear out, I can get organized, I can figure out what I need to put up, where I need to put it, keep it nice and dry. I could even use it as an additional rain fly over the top of this if I really wanted to. And then that would help even further with that condensation issue. But like I said, I really didn't have a condensation issue with this tent. Lastly, we'll talk about setup a little bit. As I've mentioned several times, including in the AT hike video that I did, it was pouring down rain the first night that we got there. Even in the pouring rain, I had no issue setting this tent up with a good pitch, nice solid bathtub floor, was immediately dry inside with no issues there. I mean, I'm fighting against the clock and fighting against the rain, trying to get this thing up the first night. And it was one of the first few times that I've sent the TED up, so I wasn't super familiar with it. And it worked great. It was very adjustable, easy to get the tie outs adjusted to where that wall was nice and flat or even pushed out a little bit so that you had more headroom inside. The vestibules came out perfectly. Uh, the, the roof line across the two trekking poles was perfect. Uh, the first night I realized I did have the trekking poles up a little bit high, so I kind of created a saddle up there at the top, and I was laying in bed looking up at that and thinking, I think those trekking poles are just a little too high. So they were, but it didn't affect it at all. It rained that whole first night, stayed dry. Next night I adjusted the trekking poles down. Um, I found that the setting of 120 is the best for both and gets you a nice flat level ridge on the tent and that worked just fine, but very easy to set up. Never really had any issues with setting the tent up, other than, like I said, hard to find a level site sometimes. But setting it up was super simple, breaking it down, super simple. And I know a lot of people roll these, it kind of, when you take the poles out, it kind of falls in on itself and creates a natural opportunity for you to fold it. I'm not a tent folder, they call it a stuff sack for a reason. So I just stuff the tent in there and that's what I've done here. And that works out just fine. And it's nice, quick and easy breakdown of camp. And then we were on the trail. That's pretty much all I have for my post hike review of the 3F UL Landshan 2 Pro. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, things you'd like to know more about the tent. I feel like I've covered it all as far as my experience is concerned, but maybe you have something else of course, I always welcome feedback in the comments, something I may have missed or something like that. Appreciate you jo joining me for this post-hike review of the 3F UL Landshan 2 Pro, and I look forward to seeing you in the real outdoors.